this morning. But God, we thank you for the breath. Hallelujah. The breath of life that you bring. Breathe.
Hallelujah. We, we live this life not by what we see, but we walk by faith. Is that right? We walk by faith, faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can I can tell you right now. There's somebody you can pray, you can believe, you can trust in God. And all 
have built their life on the solid foundation of faith in Jesus Christ, on that day, their life will stand. Because they built their life on the foundation of Jesus and upon obedience to His word. Amen. Amen. But those who built their life on the shifting sand of human morality and religious effort, their lives will come crashing down and be swept away by the waters of God's judgment. They will be lost. Lost not just for time, but lost for eternity. And if we believe that teaching from God's word this morning, that means we must do everything possible in our power to seek and save those that are lost. Is that right? If we really believe that that day is coming, that that storm is on the horizon for every human soul, we've got to do everything that we can to make sure ourselves, those that we love, those that we come in contact with, that we reach out to seek and save them, that they are not a part of that great destruction. In the late 70s, there was a brand new uh, movement, a church, a church movement that started late 70s, early 80s, and uh, they called it the Seeker Sensitive Church. You guys remember hearing about that? Anybody been around that long? Amen. They called it the Seeker Saver or Seeker Friendly Church. It, it came on the scene of evangelical Christianity, and uh, that movement, those churches that were part of it, uh, they were different in many ways, but they also had some common characteristics or traits that they all shared. One of them was an intense focus on attracting and ministering to the lost. That sounds pretty good. That was true of all those churches. They also had the trait of eliminating anything and everything from their message and from the programs of the church that could in any way be construed as negative or offensive or just religious by unbelievers. That was a part of the trait of those churches. You know, for example, they would uh, remove uh, pulpits from the sanctuary. They would remove crosses from the sanctuary. Um, they would replace preaching with a talk. Um, they would replace worship with singing some songs. Right? That was a part of those churches. Another thing that was characteristic of them is they were very light on doctrine and heavy on self-improvement. Light on doctrine, but heavy on self-improvement. Um, and so these churches, they defined seekers as those people who were unbelievers that were looking for God, but they just needed to come into the right church in order to find him. A church that wasn't religious, a church that was not a uh, negative or, or offensive, a church that would make it easy for them to find God based on those terms. But the whole idea of people as seekers, if you didn't recognize it, that's really not a Bible concept. I was going to be quiet this morning. That's really not a Bible concept. Because Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 and 11, some of you know it, it says, there is no one righteous, no, not even one. There is no one who understands. And Paul says, there is no one. Some say no one. No. There is no one who seeks God. Mm. Come on, that's your Bible. Look at me, that's the Bible. That tells us that the seeking is not on the unbeliever sinner's side. The seeking, come on, it takes place on God's side. God is the seeker, amen. We're the ones that are lost. God is the one that is seeking, amen. We're not the seekers looking for a lost God. We are lost sinners, and God is the one that is seeking us, amen. And so if we're really going to be biblical about this, we don't need seeker-friendly churches. We need seeker churches. We say that again. We don't need seeker-friendly churches. We need seeker churches. Jesus said, or said of Jesus in Luke nineteen ten, that the Son of Man He came to what? Seek, Seek and save the lost. Amen. And if we are His people, then we need to embrace and internalize His mission, His agenda of seeking and saving the lost in the same way that He did. Amen. We need to learn how to be a seeker church, brother. Amen. How to be a seeker church. And we learn that not from seeker-friendly churches, but from the seeking Savior, who is the original seeker 
of the lost. Amen? Amen. Would you turn with me to Luke chapter 15? Luke chapter 15. As you're turning there, it's obvious that my thoughts are uh, being drawn from the fact that this upcoming week, we are going to be participating in the Seek and Save outreach that's taking place down there in Hawthorne and Hawthorne Park. Don't act like you know what I'm talking about. We've been talking about it for several weeks. We're looking to participate as a Grace family in the Seek and Save outreach taking place in Hawthorne. And if you've not already registered and signed up, please do so. Make sure you uh, contact Sister Tyler uh, or even just uh, uh, um, you can ask me. Uh, you can go on, on gracefully.la. There's a place where you can go click and you can register. Okay? So obviously that's a part of what's going on this week. But we don't want to just be involved in seeking and saving on one particular week. We want to do that every day of our lives. Yeah. And then, so how do we become a seeker church? Well, obviously we have to look at the seeking and saving to find out what those traits are. Are we all there? Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Are we all there? Amen. It says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. I just have to note that people gather in church sometimes for a lot of different reasons. Right? The tax collectors and sinners, they were there to hear Jesus. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were there to criticize and accuse Jesus. Hold on. Come on. Everybody here at church is here for Jesus. Right. Amen. 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 Keep on moving, Pastor. Keep on moving, Pastor. Verse 3 says, Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? Hallelujah. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Mm. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99, quote unquote, righteous persons who do not need to repent. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we want to learn from Jesus in this parable some of the traits of a secret church. Amen. Hallelujah. We going on, Jesus. A secret church. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to gather in your name, to be in your house, Lord, among the people of God, in your presence. And Lord, we just now open our hearts to your word. And we ask God that you would speak to us, God, that you would deposit the truth of your word in our hearts like seed, that it would germinate, Lord, it would find fertile soil, that it would bear fruit, that we would be transformed, God, that we would be challenged that we would be helped and equipped, Lord God, to be the seekers of the loss that you want us to be. And so we trust you to do that in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Real quickly, I just want to give you a couple of the traits of a seeker church that we've all got to incorporate into our lives as individual believers. The first one I see here in our text, if we're going to be a seeker church, is we have to, number one, take note. Take note of the loss. Look at verse number three and four. It says, Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one lost sheep? And in the natural, that answer is absolutely we would do that. That makes no sense. That's logical, right? There's a problem with that. The Pharisees have to ask that question, no. We're not looking for the lost sheep. We're comfortable right here in the flock. We're comfortable right here. And that's exactly who Jesus is talking to. He says, you understand, it just makes sense that if one is lost as a shepherd, you're going to go after that lost sheep. But you, as the leaders, as the Pharisees, the teachers of Israel, you guys are comfortable right there in the flock. And in your mind, that lost sheep is not worth going after. 
Oh, he's talking to them. They would have to say the Gentiles were not worth going after. They were too far. They were too filthy. They were deemed as not worth the effort of going after. Matter of fact, they might not even notice if they were going. You think about just a shepherd with a hundred sheep. That's a lot of sheep. And it's very possible all that bleeding and, and buying and all of that, that wool, that white wool that's out there, that you might not notice one of those sheep be missing. Just for the natural. You might not notice it. Unless you're the good shepherd. Who knows every sheep bleeding personally. Who knows the shade of white that each sheep in that hundred sheep flock looks like. Amen. And those religious leaders, the Pharisees, they wouldn't notice it. They didn't care. But Jesus is communicating to the point that God is not like that. That God has a heart to go after the one. Yeah. He places value on the one. In God's heart, the individual matters. Yeah. The individual matters. Yeah. So we live in a society where it's all about numbers and it's all about crowds and it's, it's all about popularity and how big and how many and how far. But that Because every 
Every single one of those lost individuals is precious in the sight of God. God places value on the one. Yes. She never lets me live it down. But my daughter tells me, recounts to me a memory that she had some time when me and her brothers and her mom we went to a, an event at Shakey's Pizza. It was a birthday party. Come on, have you ever been to a kid birthday party on a Saturday at Shakey's Pizza? <laughs> Kids are loving it. All the mojo potatoes and pizza that they can have. And that's the last thing you want to see is another mojo potato. Because <laughs> a parent girl often looking to get away from that. From that party. Amen. I was speaking myself. I couldn't wait to get away from, from that party. And after it was all over and we were putting all the mojo potatoes and pizza in styrofoam containers and ready to go, we loaded up the car. But listen, she took one car, I took another, we, we took off going home. Yeah. And we got home. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Unloaded the car, and bringing all the styrofoam containers in the house. Here comes Garrison, here goes David. Where's Lydia? Baby, where's Lydia? She came with me by the car. With me. We called over to Shakey's. They were a little sad. Scared girl. They got left in shape. <laughs> Somebody do something about those parents. So I had to load up and make make it back to shaky with swiftness and come pick up a little girl who looks sad and say, How could you? Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. 
Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country? And that next word says, and go. Somebody say go. Go. And go after the one lost sheep until he finds it. Not only do we have to take note when they're lost, but when we take note, we have to take initiative. Amen. We've got to do something. Amen. Because the truth of God's word teaches us that the lost will not. No, let me replace that. The, the lost cannot find their way back home. That's true. That's why they're lost. Oh, Lord. They're lost because they cannot come back into the fold. Oh. They're not going to do it on their own. Mercy. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, As for you, you were dead. Somebody say dead. dead. You were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world. Amen. Not to be dead people can move. Ah. You were dead in the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in and now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following. Somebody say follow. Oh, and we're following its desires and thoughts. This passage teaches us that that lost sheep out there is dead to spiritual things. That means they can't come back on their own. They're under the rule of the prince of the power of the air. They're under his domination and control. And they are following their own sinful nature. Amen. Amen. And because of those factors, they cannot find their way on their own. We have to go after them. Amen. Jesus said the good shepherd goes after them. Yes. He doesn't sit in the sheep pen and just call their name and hope they'll show up. Hope they'll move faster than the wolves that are chasing them. Hoping that they'll avoid falling off of some steep cliff or injuring themselves so that they become vulnerable prey. He goes after them. What an challenge that is to us, is it not? Yes. Some of us here, you're, you're animal lovers, pet lovers, <laughs> dog lovers. And you can't hardly go anywhere in our city without finding a telephone pole, a light pole, a board somewhere that has a picture stapled to it of a lost dog. Rottweilers, pit bulls, little French, French bulldog, whatever that popular dog is now. I mean, every kind of dog imaginable. That as soon as those dogs go missing, immediately there are posters, there's text messages, every effort is made to find that lost pet. Isn't that true? Because they're precious, they're valuable to those in that household. Because I thought about that. I thought, you know, sometimes there are people that seek after their lost pets with a greater sense of urgency than we as believers seek after those that are lost without Christ. Not even grace. The other churches. That people get so complacent about those who don't know Jesus, that we think, well, they're just going to wander their way back in. Well, when they get tired of sin enough, well, they'll, they'll come back to Jesus, or they'll, they'll come to the church. In fact, our whole paradigm as a church many times is to see how can we attract lost people to the church. Listen, we want lost people to come to church, but can I just tell you, in the biblical paradigm, the church goes to the laws. In the biblical paradigm, the church goes to the lost. We're not expecting the lost to come into the church. That's good. We want to be there to do that. But that's not where our strength is. Our strength is in following the instruction of our seeking Savior and to go to where they are. Amen. You can't wait on them. Amen. We have to go to them. Amen. We love that verse. 
engage. One of the reasons I think we don't go out and seek the same is because how you to, to leave the sheep hole, the sheep pen, and to go out into the open wilderness, that's taking a risk. It's a risk to go after the lost. We have to take a chance of somebody misunderstanding. Somebody taking a shot at you because you're no longer in the same company. If I don't miss my guess, that's what Jesus is expecting. It's just to leave the comfort and the warmth and the safety of the 99 and to go out there following his model, expressing the heart of the Savior, and to take a chance. To strike, to strike up a conversation, to give an invitation, to make the effort. Yes. To make the effort. Yes. To take the initiative yes. with the loss. Amen. 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 Take the initiative. One other thing, one other thing I want to give you. If we're going to be a secret church, we have to take note. We have to take initiative. One more thing that I see here that begins here in verse number five. We have to take joy. Mm -hmm. Take joy. Look at me at verse number five. It says, and when he finds it, mm -hmm. he joyfully, somebody say joyfully. Joyfully. He joyfully puts it on his shoulders. And goes on. Then he calls his friends and his neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. Somebody say, Rejoice. Rejoice, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing. Somebody say, Rejoicing. Rejoicing. More rejoicing in heaven over one lost sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah.
They resent it. Because they think somebody's getting away with something. They think somebody's not going to pay for all they've done to me or to them or to that situation. And so they resent the grace of God. When we do that, listen, we're forgetting the grace that God has poured out on us. On us. Yes. It doesn't matter what they've been in, how far they've been lost, how many birds they carry in in their wool. Listen, when they come back to Jesus, we need to rejoice. We need to celebrate. We call the other his friends and his neighbors. We need to rejoice and celebrate. If God can celebrate their salvation, then why can't we? If God can celebrate their salvation, then why can't we?
then our church will be a speaking church. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that when we were lost in our sins, when we were under the, the rule and the bondage of our enemy, the prince and power of the air, the devil, that you came and you broke, you destroyed the works of the evil one. Lord God, you didn't wait for us to come looking for you, but you came seeking after us individually. You didn't count any one of us as just a necessary loss. Lord, but you died for each and every one of us. You went seeking for us. You drew us to you. And we have the joy of being saved because of your grace lavished and poured out upon us. Lord, we just ask that that lavish grace that we have all experienced, God would not only bring salvation to us, but God, that you would give us passion. You would give us Lord, the same heart that you have to lay aside our comfort, to lay aside our fears, to lay aside God, our own our own concerns, God, and to see with your eyes. Lord, to take the risk to be seeking disciples. Lord, not just those that are comforted and being comforted and being found. Yes. Start with me. Start with us. Lord, let us be that seeking church in the to be sharing good news on every occasion, looking for opportunities, making ourselves available. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. Just with every hand down, every eye closed this morning, I do just want to make the appeal. It's very possible you may have come into the sanctuary this morning, and you have never come to the temple. You are still out on the hillside, vulnerable to the enemy. He's bringing hurt, he's bringing confusion, he's bringing pain into your life. And there's no savior for you to go to that you can receive the healing oil of his forgiveness. I just want to say, he's seeking after you this morning. He's seeking you as an individual. Not the group, not a crowd, he's looking for you. Yes. If that's you, you feel he's speaking yes. to you, or you're here in the sanctuary, if you're watching online, if you're passionate, I want to respond to that. I want to respond to the love of a seeking Savior by yielding my heart, my life to Him. Just slip your hand up right where you are. Right back there, I want to pray for you. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Right back down. Hallelujah. He's not asking you to clean up. He's not asking you to get yourself Ready? He says, come as you are. Let me do healing. Let me do the restoration of your life. I just want to lead you in a simple prayer. If you raise your hand, if you're in the sanctuary, or if you're you watching online, I just want to lead you in a simple prayer for repentance and faith. And if you mean it from your heart, God's going to hear your prayers and come in and make you new. Let's pray again. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I confess to you I've sinned. I sit as separating me from you. And I'm tired of being without you. I realize, Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. You suffered the Father's wrath so that I might be forgiven. So I turn my back on my sin. I give control of my life to you. I ask you to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to be my Shepherd. Bring me into right relationship with the Father. Not because of anything that I've done, but because of what you have already done for me. Please wash me, forgive me, give me a brand new heart. This moment forward, help me to walk with you. Thank you for hearing my prayer, Jesus. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give a praise. Thank you all. Hallelujah. Thank God for every person that prayed that prayer this morning. And we just, uh, we want to.
to let you know that we have a booklet here called it Down Up. If you've not received this, we want to make sure we put it in your hands when you're here in the sanctuary. Um, if you'd like to receive one of these booklets, a brother Earl has one of them. If you want to use one of those, just slip your hand. We'd be glad to give one to you. If you're watching online, all you have to do is contact us. Just send us a, a message at info at graceassembly.la. Info at graceassembly.la. Uh, give us your contact information and we'll make sure that we send that to you. We want every person who knows the Lord to have somebody to walk with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we want to make sure that we're able to do that. Amen. Uh, that we ask our usher to please come forward and prepare to see my morning's title offering. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to say thank you to all of the faithful givers and tithers in the house uh, this morning. Um, we, need, we need your giving. Amen. 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 Things have, have changed for, for many of us. That's why he comes to most of the things when God's faithful. And uh, we just trust him to meet the needs of your life and your household. And uh, as he blesses you, uh, don't forget to, go to show your faithfulness and gratitude to the Lord for all that he's done in your life. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for the vision that you have put in our hands to meet the needs of, of us and our families. And, and Lord, that even you've given us uh, uh, resources of beyond that in order, in order to be a blessing to those around us. We ask now, God, that you would just show your faithfulness in the lives of your people. You know that we cannot give uh, to, just to, as a way of manipulating you, but we give because we've already received your grace in our lives. So we just pray a blessing upon all of your people. Thank you. 
months ago. Amen. Uh, but we have an upcoming Bible study that we've been asked uh, to join uh, Pastor Steve Bland in La Palma. He has a church there at La Palma Christian Center, and I have the address if you'd like uh, more information about that. But we will be joining them on Wednesday. The 30th. The 30th of, of August. Yes. So um, we'll have more information about that, the address and the location and time. So that Wednesday night Bible study, please mark your calendar that we're going to be joining them um, for that Bible study. And Pastor Earl is going to be sharing um, for that study. So your support is coming out for that Wednesday night Bible study. Um, we would love to see you there uh, for that. And the last uh, announcement is we're going to have a combined worship night on Sunday, September 24th. Um, we we're going to be combined with other churches who will be here at Grace Assembly. We will be the host church for this Amen. combined church. And we will have our own uh, Ron Brown. He is the Teen Challenge uh, Director over all the Teen Challenges in Southern California. And he's going to be our speaker for that service here at Grace. And so we will be posting um, that service. I mean, our church will be posting that service. And so there will be other Assemblies of God churches, um, their families and friends coming here. And we're going to be posting that service. So um, please see me and coordinate refreshments for everyone. Um, we're expecting maybe about 100 people here. So um, if you'd like to help me um, coordinate the refreshments for after service, please see me in regards to that so that we can host and show our hospitality well. Those are all the Amen. Um, for those of you that have never had the opportunity, you don't want to miss uh, Brother Ron Brown preaching. He is, he is a great, dynamic man of God, uh, executive director for Team Challenge. Uh, and and uh, I'm very grateful that uh, we can host that here at Grace. So, great um, friend, great stuff out. It's going to be a great night. Uh, we're going to have refreshments and a great word, great time of fellowship, meeting some of your other brothers and sisters that are part of the AG family um, and, and building some, some networks and contacts there. So, please remember to do that. Um, also, uh, I just want to real quickly just thank all of our uh, Mercy Ministry team members that served yesterday. Amen. <laughs> and, 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 tremendous, tremendous uh, outreach. Um, I, I came over here by the church and I just, I saw grocery bags, boxes, a long line of people and I understand that there was a we had two truckloads of food from yesterday. Yep. So we gave out a lot of food. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, indeed. So I just, I just want to thank everybody for, for that. And, and also, um, I want to thank everybody that showed up for prayer meeting. We had all church prayer meeting um, yes. two Fridays ago. We had a good group of people here that made time to pray. Amen. <laughs>
of our of our city, of our region right now. Lord, we just pray, God, for safety, God, for every person in Southern California and the Southwest region right now. Lord, that, that, that the storm that is approaching our direction, God, that there would not be any loss of life, God, to keep uh, people safe. There would not be any tragic stories that come out of that, but that you would just uh, keep your hands of protection upon those that are vulnerable, or the, those that are uh, isolated, God, and those, those like the seniors and elders, who the elderly in our, in our uh, region, especially, God, but just I'm going to just pray for safety upon all the people of Los Angeles, Southern California. Yes. God, that this will come and pass, and Lord, that it will not turn into something that is tragic. And so I'm just pray for safety upon all of these, your people, uh, as we gather together again in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.